Number 95, the indicator dinitrophenol is an acid with a Ka of 1.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. In a 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molar solution, it is colorless in acid and yellow in base. Calculate the pH range over which it goes from 10% ionized, which is colorless, to 90% ionized, which is yellow. Okay, so seems here that we're dealing with an acid, right? They did say that dinitrophenol is an acid, right? And dinitrophenol, not one of my six strong acids. So this has to be a weak acid, right? And it's a weak acid. They gave us a specific Ka for it. Now they are talking about that when it's colorless, it's going to be an acid. And when it's yellow colored, it's going to be a base. This is an indicator. So it changes colors at different pHs. And that's what we have to do. We just have to find that pH range in which it would be colorless, and then it goes to yellow. Now they did say that it's going to be 10% ionized when it's colorless, and 90% ionized when it's yellow. Now we have to do these in a two-parter. So we're gonna first work with the colorless uh, ionization, and then we're gonna work with the, uh, you know, the yellow ionization, the 90%. So let's start over here. So I have 10% ionized. And this is the colorless. Okay. Now they did say that we're starting off with a 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And we're saying that it's 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth solution of the dinetrophenol, which is the acid, right? So maybe I'll just put acid. Now, when it becomes 10% ionized, that means that 10% of this amount got converted into its conjugate base, right? So the amount that's being ionized just basically means it's the amount that gets converted into its base. So I just have to find out, well, what is 10% of the starting amount? This is basically your initial amount. So... If I just do 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity, and maybe I'll just say I'll times this by 10%. Now remember, we don't use percents when we're dealing with math, when we, we need to convert this into a decimal, right? So I just move the decimal over two times to the uh, left. So this would be the same thing as multiplying by 0 0.10. So 0. 1, 0, which is essentially 10%. Okay, so this is going to be the amount that got transferred over into the base. So let's see, I'm going to say 1 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0.1, and I get 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. Now this is all that got converted to the base. So that means how much is left of my acid. So if one times 10 to the negative fifth got converted into the base, how am I gonna find out how much acid I have left? Yeah, I would have to subtract, right? So I would do, maybe I'll do this in red, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity minus the amount that got converted because of the 10%. And that's how much is left in my acid form. So let's do that real quick. So that becomes 9.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. That is still the acid. And look at that, guys. I have amounts of a base, the conjugate base that was made, and I have amounts of the acid. And remember, if you have actual amounts of your acid and your base, and these are weak acids and bases, I mean, it's dinitrophenol, never heard of that one right, in my six strong acids and bases, you have a buffer. And we love to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula for buffers. I don't like to use balanced equations because it's just easier this way, I think. And let's just do the math, which is this one right here, right? This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And look, we can find that initial pH value. pH equals pKa plus the log of the new concentration of the base over the acid. And that's what we found. 
So the base is going to be that 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the acid that's left over because of the 10% is 9.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now all I have to do is find the pKa. Well, we know this formula. pKa equals negative log of the Ka. So maybe I'll just bring that up here. Actually, yeah, I'll do it over here. Get rid of this. So my pKa is just the negative log of the Ka, which they told us. The Ka was a 1.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So let's just find out what that pKa value is. Let's see. Negative log of 1.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. Uh, let's cut it off after a few decimals. 3.959. That looks good to me. And that's going to be the number here. Now I'm all ready. I could find out that first pH because we need to find a range. Anytime that they're saying for a pH range, it's two pH values. So let's find out the first one. The pH equals 3.959 plus the log of the base, which was the 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by the remaining acid, which is 9.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if you add these up, you should get the total, right? The parts added up should equal to the total molarity. Okay, you could plug this all into, you know, into the calculator one shot. The calculator should understand what you're trying to do. So let's just do that. Log of one times 10 to the negative fifth divided by nine times 10 to the negative fifth. And then I'm gonna add the 3.959, and I get 3.00. Okay, so at a pH of 3.00, it's going to be colorless. So I have my first answer. So this is at the 10%. Now I have to see what's the new pH when it gets converted into 90%. So I just basically have to do this whole thing over again. <laughs> so, ju so just pause the video because I'm just going to erase a couple of things. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all of this, right? The pKa is going to stay because that doesn't change for... Um, a given acid. I'm just going to get rid of this. And now I'm going to come back to the top. Boop. And I'm going to say, instead of 10%, we now have 90%. So 90% ionized means that 90% of the acid got converted into its conjugate base. So I have to figure out what that percentage is. Well, all we have to do just like we did before, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth times by 90%. But remember, I have to take it out of percentage. So that would be 0 0.90. And let's see. And this is going to be the amount that got converted into the base. So 1 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0 0.9. I get 9 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's the base. Now, if this amount got converted into the base, how much acid is left over? That's when we have to do the subtraction. 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity of the starting acid minus the amount that got converted into the base, 9.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And that's going to equal the remaining acid, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. So it looks like the numbers just got swapped. And since we have an amount of base, the conjugate base, and we have amount of the acid, and they're weak, this is still a buffer. So there I go to the uh, henderson hasselbach The base now number for 90% is going to be the 9.0. 
times 10 to the negative fifth. And then the acid now is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. pKa is still the number from before. We're solving for that new pH. Love this formula. Makes everything much easier. So pH equals 3.959 plus the log of the base, which is the 9.1, actually 9.0 times 10 to the negative fifth, divided by the 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. And let's see. And this is for the 90%. So let's see. Three point, uh, actually, let me do the log first. Log of 9 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then plus 3.959. I'm going to say 4.91. No units on pH. It's unit less. So I'm just going to pull this up here. And that's the 90%. So there is your pH range. Your pH range from 10% ionization when it's colorless to yellow, 90%, only happens from 3% pH to 4.91. So overall, it's still acidic that this indicator is going to change its color. All right? So maybe if I just bring this answer down here and say, you know, this is the final answer. There we go. Love it. And that's it, guys. Hopefully this helped. This concludes the end of the acid-base chapter. It's been a wild ride, a lot of videos, but a lot of learning. I'm proud of you guys. Keep working hard. The next chapter is going to be probably a little bit of the same, but a little bit different. But we're still dealing with K values. So we're still in that kind of idea here. All right. If you wouldn't mind, if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Just gets the word out in the YouTube land that this uh, YouTube channel exists and that there's free educational content for anyone who is willing, you know, and wants to learn physics, math, and chemistry at the moment. And thank you so much for that. You guys rock. I'll see you all in the next chapter. Woohoo! See you later. Bye bye.